This is Charles Davenport, effectively the first director of the Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory and the scientist who brought Cold Spring Harbor into the field of genetics. After Mendel's laws were dis rediscovered in 1900, Davenport immediately sensed they might be applicable to humans and to the idea of Francis Galton, uh, Charles Darwin's cousin, who coined the word eugenics, the improvement of humans through better breeding. Galton believed that uh, the differences between humans were inherited and uh, he wrote a book about hereditary genius and uh, thought geniuses should marry other geniuses and have lots of children and uh, but, it, you know, there was no way of proving whether these ideas were right or wrong because uh, Galton didn't understand the mechanism of inheritance. These ideas were considered highly progressive. Uh, uh, prominent individuals uh, like uh, Theodore Roosevelt uh, thought eugenics was great. And uh, because uh, at that time, they didn't really know how to handle the unfit. They were in poor houses, homes for mentally disabled, disabled children. Uh, no one liked these. And if somehow the unfit could vanish, society would be much happier. Here's a little pamphlet by Charles Davenport, published in 1910, called Eugenics. And it was published for the YMCA Health League. And the first chapter is called fit and unfit matings. And uh, it's interesting to see the first sentence. There comes a time in the life of most thoughtful, cultured people when they realize they are drifting toward marriage and when they stop to consider if the proposed union will lead to healthful, mentally well-endowed offspring. But however much such a person may take the advice of books or friends, he will find much lack of definitive knowledge that, that, shutting his eyes to possible disaster, he decides to take the chances. Um, I'm not sure that's good. Uh, were our knowledge of heredity more precisely formulated, there is little doubt that many certainly unfit matings would be prevented. In other fit matings, there are avoided through false scruples, would be happily contracted. Oh, I think his heart was in the right direction, in possibly a narrow fashion. He was really interested in the fit and wanted to protect fit families from having unfit children. So whether you called him compassionate or not, uh, he wanted to take care of his own breed. Well, he certainly was a good scientist in that, you know, he, he was the first, you know, to, to establish a department of genetics in the United States. He really sensed that uh, the rediscovery of Mendel's laws was a big event. Uh, possibly you could understand uh, or put into practice uh, uh, Francis Galton's wish of uh, eugenics, the selective improvement of humans through better breeding. Uh, the thing was to identify unfit families. Well, you know, how, how did you avoid the unfit? And uh, it fed into racial prejudice. And uh, one way to avoid the unfit was not to let them in the United States. So uh, he decided the people from Northern Europe were much more fit for those people from Southern or Eastern Europe. And uh, uh, his sidekick here, Harry Lawland, uh, was an advisor to the U.S. Congress uh, who in 1924 uh, passed the infamous Immigra Immigration Act uh, that greatly cut back immigration from Southern and Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. So effectively, no more Italians immigrated to the United States. Uh, likewise, Jewish immigration was shut off. By the time the 1930s arrived, uh, uh, Many people effectively thought uh, uh, Davenport had lost his bunkers. You know, eugenics was just silly prejudice. Uh, unfortunately, as it lost favor in the United States, uh, Hitler came to power in Germany and uh, liked very much the ideas of the unfit, and uh, he wanted to get them out of German life. Davenport's interests, I think, always were human beings, so he wanted to know uh, how much of uh, human existence could be explained by uh, genes moving through families. 
and uh, uh, one of their you know basic uh, ideas for eugenics was uh, better breeding and uh, so uh, the eugenics world had uh, booths at uh, agricultural fairs in which you didn't display uh, a prize sheep, but you displayed prize families. And <laughs> now it seems uh, pretty ridiculous when you look at the pictures. You can't really understand why anyone would call these prize people. But uh, you know, they wanted uh, healthy families, and uh, uh, here's one of uh, eugenics and health exhibits. So uh, the idea was, uh, if someone had a particularly mental disease in the family, uh, you didn't want to marry into it. And of course, uh, as a result, people hid mental disease. <laughs> you wouldn't want to admit that your aunt was a bit wacky. Uh, then uh, you, know, you might have difficulty in having your daughter married. Here's a, uh, a pedigree which goes uh, uh, several generations, and it starts off with the insanity on one side, and uh, there was a sibling to the insane person, and it looked like normal on the other side. Uh, but you can see that uh, among the large number of children, it seemed to be 14, there were feeble-minded, there was an alcoholic, uh, insane, a number of them were, were called insane, one was called psychopathic. Then you go down to the next generation, and uh, it's less clear because uh, there's some normals but one is called alcoholic and uh, by the time you get down to the fourth generation about all they can say is uh, small children as if uh, this was in some way uh, so you can see it really uh, was very inexact I think it was a mixture of compassion and despair uh, compassion that they couldn't take care of themselves and uh, somewhat to spare that uh, public funds were in some way going to have to support them. So uh, it was a burden on society. And uh, I think uh, the financial burden was uh, in their minds. Uh, who paid for these institutions? And uh, what particularly worried them was they thought they, uh, the feeble-minded read even faster than other people. You know, they, they were promiscuous. And... Uh, you know, they just weren't moral. I mean, that's the way, of course, they looked at it. And uh, uh, so they saw them as, in real sense, uh, downers in a society. And uh, we should do everything possible to reduce their numbers. And uh, so uh, one of their pamphlets, The Burden of the Feeble Minded. And uh, uh, Emma W. Uh, you know, just had a series of illegitimate children, and uh, uh, their idea was to put them in institutions where they couldn't have children. Uh, it was an order from the top, you know. They, they, you couldn't really defend yourself. Uh, the judges had the right to say, uh, uh, sterilize you. Uh, uh, civil liberties in those days were uh, primitive compared to uh, what they are today. Well, taking away the right of a woman to have a child, you could say, uh, uh, what worse could you do to a woman? But uh, in those days, they said, uh, you know, it would be even worse uh, for you to have descendants. And not fair, because you couldn't take care of the child. In some cases, they're right. Uh, but in a lot of cases, they were wrong, you know, that... Uh, uh, because the, the whole genetics of, quote, feeble-mindedness was a mess. No one had real genes, uh, and uh, it was arbitrary whether you said, you know, there was really feeble-mindedness in the next generation. So, uh, uh, human genetics, uh, you know, there was no, uh, it wasn't like uh, animal genetics where you could do crosses. You just observed crosses or hoped they were actually the crosses you thought they were and uh, tried to follow through families. This was, you know, d done sort of chaotically initially. And then at Cold Spring Harbor, uh, they set up the eugenics record station just to do masses of pedigrees. And thousands of them were obtained here. Uh, sort of college educated women came here and were taught how to take pedigrees. And uh, they all thought they were doing good things. They were uh, uh, going to, uh, you know, prevent the unfit from uh, taking over the world. I think uh, 
it's a sort of warning. I think, you know, some things probably are bound to happen. And when Mendel's laws were rediscovered, uh, people were going to see whether they could explain uh, the differences between the fit and unfit. And uh, after about 20 years, it was clear they couldn't. But uh, the movement went on, and uh, like many movements, uh, when its time has passed, uh, they still go on. And uh, now uh, we're embarrassed by it. Uh, but you know, it's not to the point where you don't want to talk about it. In fact, you do want to talk about it because I think uh, it was a case where. Uh, Science or lack of science was confused for science. Uh, there wasn't much good about the eugenics movement. Uh, uh, they really couldn't identify good families. And uh, there's calling people genetically unfit uh, was generally, you know, without reason. Well, it wasn't clear that these families were alcoholic or thieves because of genes. You, know, you could have very easily said, uh, uh, you know, they were just the victims of awful fate. You lose your job, or you know, uh, what do you do? You can't support your family. Your, your family breaks apart because of poverty. Uh, here's the uh, legislative uh, status of. Uh, eugenic or sterilization in the United States uh, up to 1935. Uh, one can see that the majority of states like California or Michigan or Minnesota, uh, Virginia, North and South Carolina, they permitted it. A number of other states, uh, laws had never really moved forward like Ohio or Kentucky or Tennessee or Arkansas, uh, Colorado, Nevada. Uh, in many cases, you could say these were relatively unpopulated states. Uh, Texas was considering it, and Illinois and uh, Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Uh, uh, New Jersey had no sterilization, so it was really an institution in New Jersey which uh, first claimed that uh, mental defectiveness ran straight through families. Here's a, an apparent five-generation family uh, where feeble-mindedness just runs through the thing. And you can see here, F, 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 and, uh, uh, but up on top, you could wonder, how did they really know these things? I, I rather doubt the whole thing. And uh, I wonder how many of these kids went to school, or under what conditions, and how they were tested, and uh, who said this? But this was the sort of thing which affected uh, social policy, the legislation. These sort of uh, diagrams were shown, and uh, uh, legislatures who really didn't understand the science or the, the strength of it passed laws uh, really upon the urging of a relatively small number of people who had it on their social agenda, sterilized the unfit.